Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. It's Monday, so it's recall day. And I want to take a minute to thank someone. I'm not going to mention their name. Uh, if they want to mention themselves, they can in the comments section. Without this person going back and forth with me on Instagram, I probably wouldn't have continued this segment every Monday. So thank you, because this has been a great idea. Nobody really does it. And I think it's very informative for the RV community, especially those that already own rigs, to get caught up on the recalls. Because their rig might be up for a recall. Who knows, right? So there are several. In fact, in the description box below, I'll link the article to it. Really, I'm just going to react to it because there are so many, and most of them are chassis-related except for a couple. So one of the major talking points is Grand Design RV has another recall out. No, it's not frame failure or frame flex, unfortunately. Those allegations have not turned into a recall yet. But once again, similar to what Brinkley was going through, or Brinkley is going through, with wiring issues, Grand Design is now has, now sorry, now has another wiring uh, recall on their reflection travel trailers. It affects 723 2024 reflections. So brand new stuff that has just been built. Well, at least built not that long ago. So 723 is a big number. Not as big as Brinkley's number at 3,151 units, but it's still a significant number. It means overall that the 12 volt refrigerator is fine because i hear a lot of chatter about well that's just proof why they should not go away from propane electric the problem isn't with the refrigerator itself the 12 volt refrigerator is just fine the problem is tripping over dollars to save pennies i mean when you cut corners on wiring it's not a good taste in people's mouths. It costs more money to do the recall than to do it right the first time. Let's face it. Now, I will say this. If that wiring is the only recommended wiring process by the 12 volt refrigerator companies, I'll apologize. But I have a feeling that in the somewhere in the manual of putting it together, it's the minimum required wiring. I don't know why. That's a guess. Because now you have two similar recalls, one by Brinkley, one by Grand Design. So why are you cutting corners on this stuff? Grand Design, you are in the middle of one of the God, you're in the middle. So much controversy. You, you are in hot water with the RV community with the allegations of frame problems. Now you're going into wiring issues on a travel trailer. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I were in charge, if you replaced Don Clark with me, the first thing I would do is get everybody together and go the buck stops here the bs stops right here we are going to do it right the first time not have 720 units go out for a recall especially when it's one brand of unit the other one that's really pisses me off that's in the description box in that article is Remember when I said, we're going to reinvent the RV business? Well, Keystone came out with the mini loft, uh, you know, that second story. But they have a recall because the metal might not have been attached properly to the coach. 
So Keystone Springdale comes out with, I mean, it's an amazing concept. I've sold a bunch of them uh, from the Cherokee lineup, the Wolf, the Timberwolf lineup. And they're really, they're a cool concept. They look like a little miniature condo on wheels that you park at the river. But the metal's not attached to the frame properly. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> I mean this is one, re everybody at dealerships that sell new uh, RVs, travel trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, always asking me, why do you think it's so slow? But we sell a bunch of used. It must be the price. Price is a part of it. Price, interest rates. That's a part of the problem. But the other part is, I had one guy come up to me. We were talking. He's trying to buy a motorhome. We were chit-chatting. This guy probably has between 8 and $10 million in the bank. Great credit. Everything good. He's buying a 2021 motorhome right now in the middle of it i go why are you buying a 2021 everybody's scared of covid units he goes eh covid units that's all a bunch of malarkey he says i'm buying a 2021 because it's priced 40 percent less than a new one is i go okay and he says with all the recalls the one-year warranty you get he says if they're gonna cut corners i'd rather spend 40 percent less on something that the corners were cut then pay 40% more for a new one with the corners cut. So that's another issue coming up. That's why, like, I talk to a lot of dealerships that are strictly used dealers. Let me turn on the light. They strictly sell used. And they said it's been an amazing year of business. Amazing. Lots of great credit. Lots of people with money. So obviously the economy is good in the used market, unlike automobiles. Automobiles are slow. RVs are hot. Fifth wheels, travel trailers, toy haulers, motorhomes. People are flocking to used because of several reasons, including economics, interest rates, price. But quality, it's not about, oh, it was built better back in 2002. No, it was built worse in 2002. I've been a part of it. I've worked on 1990s and 1980s coaches that are just absolutely destroyed because they weren't built that well. They are built better today overall than they were in the 1980s and 90s. I can guarantee you that. But Folks look at a 2004, 2005, a 2006, and they're spending a lot less money. That's what they're looking at. They can go buy cash, a $40,000 motorhome, instead of spending hundred and fifty grand, and you're getting the same quality product. One's just been previously owned, going to have cosmetic issues. But guess what? There's cosmetic issues in new ones too. So... If the RV industry wants to make a comeback, somebody has to step up and say, we're done with the bullshit. We're done cutting corners. They don't have to be pretty. That's the problem. Everybody's trying to beautify something and spend all their money on the beauty. And ladies, forgive me, okay, because I'm going to use a, a reference that is probably going to offend the women. And I apologize immensely, but it's like the best analogy. So please don't take it the wrong way. I'm going to have to duck and cover because I'm probably, hey, cancel him. <laughs> but it's like when you get like pimples or breakouts, let's say that time of the season is coming or that time of the month is coming and Maybe you got some acne things going, right? So what do you do if you have to go out to a dinner that's a corporate dinner or family dinner situation? Pay got to make it a pop, 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 and lipstick the heck out of yourself and pop, pop, pop the whole makeup and cover that zit, pop it, cover it, pop it, cover it. No, it's not covered. And then finally it's beautified, right? It's gone, it's done. But you know and I know the pimple's still there. <laughs> the zit's still there. 
It's the same thing about the RV industry, except for the pimples, the wiring, the frame, For if you were mentioning the allegations of grand design, uh, the stupid panoramic windows on these Forest River products, the metal not being attached properly on a mini loft by Springdale. Beautiful product on the inside, photographs really well, videos really well, but the pimple's still there. And that's what people are noticing, right? So that's where, like, there has to be some massaging of this. And the first manufacturer that goes, we'll be plain Jane, but we're going to build it better. And we're going to spend the money building it better. So that way, consumers will come back. And I think that that's what it's going to take. It's going to take them to lower their prices and build a better quality unit. That's what it's going to take. <sighs> We're almost done with the road, guys. I swear. <laughs> Off and on. Actually, Wednesday's uh, Wednesday's deal is going to be actually at an RV park. I'm actually going to do the podcast at an RV park on Wednesday, and then Friday uh, from the little studio. And, uh, you know, of course, we're going to go live on Saturday night on the main channel. Look, I'm not, look, guys, I'm not telling you, and I want to make this clear. I'm not telling you don't go buy a new RV. New RVs are fine. There's nothing wrong with going out and buying a new RV as long as you're educated about it, okay? As long as you're informed about what can and possibly go wrong. As long as you're not listening to the corporate RV dealership YouTubers as long as you're not talking to those guys with a half a million subscribers, I have too much to lose. You know, if you got quarter million subscribers, you have too much to lose if you're on that side of the fence, okay? If you're on the Liz Amazing side of the fence, you have too much to lose not to be negative, okay? I'm telling you, like... If Liz Amazing tomorrow started doing nothing but positive videos, she'd lose her audience. It's fact. There, there becomes an expectation. So take everything with a grain of salt from everybody, including me. Okay? I try to give you both sides of it. I do the best I can without getting blacklisted out of the industry. But... There's nothing wrong with buying a new RV. There's nothing wrong with buying a 2024 or 2025. Just know what you're getting yourself into. Know that there are some things that come with the ownership of these. You don't have to go out and buy used. You don't have to come up with excuses about quality. In fact, the build quality overall has gotten better since I got in the industry almost 15 years ago. That's a fact. Okay, there were years where things were built like, sh excuse my language, but like shit brick houses or brick shit houses or whatever you want, however you want to put it. And there were years where they weren't. There were years because it, it's all quality control about. So Coleman, never going to be a top of the line product. It's a price affordability thing. Brinkley will never be Mobile Suites, Redwood, Riverstone, Outdoors RV, Arctic Fox. They'll never be them. Montana will never be that way. Cougar will never be that way. Everybody is set in their own price point and what price point they should be in. Everybody has their own presentation and pitch on what they do and how they do it. But I'm going to tell you, the prettier it looks, and the low, if it's got too good of a price, and it looks too pretty. <laughs> Woo! Lipstick on a pig. Lipstick on a pig. Until next time, toolkit and sense of humor.